this is Palmer, and welcome to my Beginner's Guide to New World, the MMO due out on August 31st, 2021. Right now you can apply for access to the Alpha Test at the New World website, so consider doing that if you want to learn more about the game. And a closed beta begins on July 20th. Anybody who pre-ordered the game will have access to that. I've played a lot in the previous alphas, um, they've actually had a number of tests in the past. I'm not in the current one, so some of this info may be a little bit out of date, but it's still a good basic guide to the game. And as I understand it, the changes that have been introduced so far have been things like rebalancing the weapons and adding some more weapons and making the crafting system uh, even more complex than it was before. So the, the basics of the game haven't changed very much. Um, the footage here comes from last year's preview event where there is no NDA, so I'm not breaking any rules here. So, combat. What hasn't changed is that the world has an action combat system, and here's a basic explanation of how it works. New World is an action combat game, so you have two main attacks. You have uh, the fast attack, which is just hold down the left mouse button, and then you have the large attack, which is uh, hold the left mouse button down for a little bit longer. Strong attack, this is called. Uh, and then in addition, you have a number of abilities that you can equip to your hotbar. You only have three abilities at once that you can equip. At the moment, I only have two because this character only has two. So let's take a look at his abilities. If I can find something else to fight here. Uh, there's an enemy. You use the abilities with the Q, the R and the F button. So this guy has a, a shield bash. And he has a uh, AOE attack. In addition, you can block using the left mouse button. So in this case, I'm blocking and it holds up my shield. You can dodge using the uh, space button. Um, if you don't have a shield, you can still block. Even if you're using a ranged weapon such as blow, you can still block. But uh, you won't block as effectively, it won't block half as much damage. There are other features in the game, such as uh, some elements of crowd control. Uh, healing is a is a factor in the game, but um, that's some idea. That gives you an idea what combat is like. Um, a feature of the game is that you can have multiple weapons, and you can switch between them. Any character can use any weapon, or indeed any armor. You can switch from uh, light armor to heavy armor if you want. You improve your weapon skills as you use a weapon. And uh, as you improve your skills, you can choose special abilities, uh, which you can then put on your hotbar. In theory, you can eventually master any weapon in the game. However, there is also an attribute system, which means that as you level, you put points into things like strength, dexterity, and so on. So there's a bit of specialization there, because if you put all your points into strength, for example, you might do lots of damage with a warhammer, but you won't be as good with a bow as somebody who puts all the points into dexterity. Even so, you might choose to carry a warhammer for melee and a bow for ranged combat. There are lots of places to explore in the game. The game world is full of little things to find, like this cave, for example, where sometimes rare metals spawn, um, although I didn't find any on this uh, occasion. When it was first developed, New World was a massively multiplayer survival game, and the developers have moved away from that a bit, but you can still tell uh, what it was uh, originally meant to be. So, one result of this is that there are lots of plants and other materials to gather all over the place. If you kill an animal, you can easily skin the animal, you can kill turkeys and get the feathers from the turkeys. There's a big emphasis on crafting, although if you don't like crafting that's okay, you can just buy what you need on the auction house, which of course will make the crafters happy too. However, the world map has a number of settlements, and each settlement has its own auction house, they're not server wide. In fact, in this game settlements matter a lot. The banks are also local, so if you put your stuff in one bank, you can't go to a different settlement and take the stuff out and you gain regional experience points which you can use to buy bonuses which only apply for that one region. So over time you find that you have certain advantages in one region like maybe a boost to crafting or harvesting which you don't have in others. 
you can also buy houses in settlements. What this all means is that at some point, perhaps when you've finished levelling up, you'll probably want to choose one settlement to call home. It is possible to have homes in more than one settlement, to sort of have stuff in, in different banks in different settlements, but um, that's probably not the optimal way to play. Note that my bow has a fire effect, and that's because I used a special item in crafting it to give the bow fire damage. There's a really detailed crafting system in the game, and apparently they've added even more options in recent patches over the past couple of weeks or so. Settlements also level up over time. Uh, one thing to be aware of is that um, crafting stations have levels, and they will level up over time um, as people who live in this particular town perform certain quests. So the people who live here, the character, when I say live here, I mean players like me who choose to make this their base, the place where they hang out. They can actually have an effect on the town where they live. Even though these are NPC towns, so they're not built by players, they're, they're there in the game world when the server starts, they can be owned by player guilds. And the guild that owns a town gets to decide how the town improves. They can also activate certain buffs, which help everybody in the town who owns a house in the territory. Even though they help everybody, there's clearly still an, an advantage to being a guild that decides which buffs are active at any given moment. Guilds can challenge each other for ownership of a town, and this results in a PvP battle at a uh, fixed time. You can even recruit if your guild doesn't have enough people, you can recruit other people to come and fight for you. In the outside world, uh, one feature is that corrupted areas appear on the map. These are a bit like public quests in some games, or, or regional bosses, a bit like Fates in Final Fantasy XIV, uh, for example. You can do the easy ones solo, but the harder ones need a group. Uh, you can see them on the map, and random people can turn up, and you can all do them together, but there are obvious benefits to doing it as a group or as a guild. As I said previously, the closed beta begins on July 20th, and that's also when new instanced areas will be added to the game. These include 5 player instanced dungeons and 20 vs 20 battle arenas. So those of us that are pre-ordered will be able to test those new features out um, in good time for the actual release of the game, although it's not clear at this stage whether there will be an NDA on this stage of the testing. That's my guide, I hope it was useful and please do subscribe to my channel if so.